Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about my latest project, Travel Map, which allows you to visualize your travels on a map. I have a link here, it's at travelmap.xyz. So each year I travel to several places and each year I write reflections with a summary of my experiences and learnings, usually once a quarter, once a half, once a year, looking back at all the kind of adventures that I've had. And this means I always have a section dedicated to talking about my travels as that ends up being a large chunk of my year. For example, in 2023, about 22% of my year was spent traveling away from home. But I've never really had a good format for sharing these things. So when I first started doing reflections, like way back in 2017, I used to just like have these like big blobs of lists, um, listing everywhere I've been, all the kind of paragraphs of like what I did there, what I learned and everything. Um, but it's kind of like too long and boring. And so it like, even writing it was a chore. So I'm sure reading it is even more of a chore. And then I like switched over to using like Instagram pictures because like, I think pictures are just easier for people to consume. But you know, as soon as it becomes like more than five pictures, it's again, like too long and kind of boring. And then, you know, makes my page load go down, um, which isn't great for like mobile networks, especially for Instagram. It's kind of like, you know, payload network hog, um, but I digress. And then, so I just kind of went back to lists, which are just kind of boring. And I can show you what this looks like right now. This is my 2023 reflection. And I basically have a list of my adventures right here. And so I went to a lot of places, but it's like, this is just a blob of text. Like, you know, nobody's gonna read this basically. And so I've been using these lists for the past couple of reflections because it was the simplest thing I could find. Couldn't think of anything better, but it obviously didn't like represent these travels in like a concise and like meaningful way. And I want to call out that I previously tried to solve this way back in 2018 with Geolog. Um, and I use this to kind of like visualize a bunch of when I used to do like stickers way back in the day. Uh, let's see if I can show you. Yeah. And it like kind of did this thing, but it was like very clunky. It ran off of, of a CSV, you know, it was pretty too, it ended up being too clunky for me to even use. So like definitely way too clunky for me to like share it with others and for them to actually use it. Um, so just, just not great. And so travel map is, you know, for visualizing travels. And it's basically my newest iteration of trying to solve this problem for myself. So I can, you know, have something nice to share in my reflections. And so here's an example uh, of me using it to kind of visualize my 2023 travels and kind of see everywhere that I went. And actually now that I see this map, I feel like this one shouldn't exist, um, which I guess shows you why it's good to actually map these travels because this, I don't think I went here. And so it's really currently very simple. You just map a list of like latitude, longitude locations on a very crude map. Uh, it's a bit clunky. Uh, it's not the prettiest thing in the world. I'm not very good at like front end, um, I'll be honest, uh, but it does the job. So I'm sharing it out here to see if there's like any interest in this thing, um, if there's anything that people wanna see it improved. Otherwise, you know, I'll just keep it as is and, and use it for myself. So I'm gonna give you a quick demo of this. It's literally just a map. This is a leaflet JS map using OpenStreetMap here. Um, just gives you this kind of box and you can just kind of put in a place. Uh, I live in New York. York. New York is about at 40 North, um, 70 West, somewhere around here. Yeah, that, that's in the water, but you know, it's, it's around there somewhere. And then if you add additional rows or locations, um, then it's just going to draw a map or a line between each one to kind of visualize that like, oh, this was a, a travel path that you took. So very simple, a little bit clunky, um, but it does the job for now. Okay, how it's built. So I love building things. You know, I mostly talk about that here on this channel. Um, so of course, I'm going to have a section on how I built it. Um, so travel map is basically built with my typical tech stack. If you've seen the hammy burger from last year, um, I'll probably do another one this year. It's largely the same. It's basically just boring battle tested technologies that I'm comfortable with um, so that I'm not you know, spinning my wheels on learning new technologies that do the exact same thing. Um, so I spent, so mostly it's that, but I did spend a little bit of complexity budget. This project, one on exploring um, mapping software, because you know, this is like a mapping a website. So I think that's pretty crucial to make sure that it's actually useful. And then also a little bit on uh, Low.js front-end tech, spe specifically Alpine for my own research. Uh, a lot of my previous recent videos have been about HTMX, which is great for server-side rendering, but kind of once you go into client-side rendering, like you need to um, maybe interact with libraries like Leaflet um, that only live on the client, you kind of need to get away from HTMX a little bit. And so Alpine, I think is a great way to do this. And this was like a, a pretty good project to kind of test it out and see how useful it is for doing things like that. Um, so I'm gonna quickly just go through my, my tech stack and what I use for each part of this um, and just link some guides to it. Um, obviously we're not gonna go into great detail here, uh, but I have written a lot about a lot of these texts um, and other things. 
So you can click into those if you want to learn more. So for the front end, I'm basically just using server-side rendered HTML. Um, basically, I like building on monoliths. And this year, I'm like kind of focused on only building with monoliths. And so for front end, I'm just doing server-side rendered HTML there using the giraffe.view engine HTML DSL, which is just nicer, in my opinion, from than writing you know raw HTML strings. Um, and then, as I mentioned, the Low.js library Alpine.js for client-side logic, mostly to interface with the leaflet.js um, library, which only lives on client side, so can't really do it fully server side. Um, but this made it pretty nice to use. And so I have a post on how I do um, server side HTML rendering with F Sharp and Draft W Engine here, um, and then a post on HTMX versus Alpine um, because I was confused about this. I saw a lot of other people were confused about when you would reach for each of these low JS options. Um, and so here's my thoughts here. For the map, I use Leaflet JS. Um, no particular reason. I, I surveyed a, a lot of the different ones. This one seemed to have like the highest rate of like being simple and easy to use. People would recommend it to others. I um, mean, it's also completely free as opposed to a lot of the other ones, which are maybe free for like a thousand or ten thousand views, and then the, the prices are actually pretty high. Um, so I just went with Leaflet JS, and you know, haven't had a problem with it. So it seems pretty nice. For the back end, I'm using F Sharp Giraffe. Uh, if you've been following the channel, you know this is my go-to for spinning up full stack apps quickly with F Sharp, um, and has been for like over a year now. Um, basically, I use my project boilerplate Cloud Seed uh, to get this started, and then I just commented out the data stuff so that it's literally just a server-side rendered app, no data. Basically, I was able to get it up and running in like 10 minutes, and then from there, I had a good foundation to build the rest of the app. So again, you know, building quickly using boring technologies I'm already comfortable with. Um, for more on F-Sharp and Giraffe and kind of why I like it, um, how you get started with it, I have a guide right here for that. But really not doing too much. It's only got like one endpoint, basically, and we're serving the HTML from that endpoint. So, so pretty simple. And then finally for hosting, um, I decided to try serverless containers on DigitalOcean app platform. I've been a long-term fan of serverless containers. I think it's the right uh, balance between ease of use and like not having to worry about a server or like security or like SSHing into anything. You literally just give them a container and they they run it, but also scalability, serverless functions, not very scalable, even though that's the whole idea behind them. Um, and they usually end up costing a lot for what you get. But serverless containers, you basically get the full power of the server you're on. It's very cheap and you don't get any maintenance costs. So for me, that's like the best option. Um, I went with DigitalOcean app platform. This time I usually go with Google Cloud Run. Um, honestly, but uh, I kind of did this um, comparison earlier this year and found that for like your dollar, uh, app platform actually goes much further um, than, than Cloud Run. Um, and so I've been experimenting with Dio uh, again this year and been pleasantly surprised by how easy it is um, to set up. So um, that's been a good experience here. So yeah, that's an overview of uh, Travel Map. Um, next time you want to visualize your travels, consider Travel Map. Please use it. Give me an, any and all feedback you have. Um, I'm particularly interested in like how to make the mobile web experience better. Like on desktop, you can see that the inputs, like they're not the prettiest thing, but they work. But on mobile, like they're not. So I got to figure out how to make that pretty in Tailwind. Um, and then also, I feel like people don't like using uh, latitude, longitude. And I feel like there's probably a better way to do inputs like this, but I don't know uh, how to do this without like hitting an API for, you know, address to lat long, which seems like complicated and like not the greatest for something s like super simple like this. Um, so yeah, any suggestions for that would be <laughs> greatly appreciated. So that's Travel Map. Please give it a, a try. And if you like this post, you might also like uh, shutting down my first startup, lessons learned, um, and things that I'm trying not to repeat, you know, in my this iteration and future iterations of uh, shipping projects. You might also be interested in my journey from software engineer to entrepreneur and back again, kind of where I am, thoughts on the state of like entrepreneurship in the world. And then finally, how I host my server-side rendered F-sharp sites on Google Cloud for less than $1 per month, going into some of the benefits of this kind of like serverless containers workflow that I mentioned earlier. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.